Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Ian Roth. And I'm Tracy McRae. If you suffer from vision problems like nearsightedness or farsightedness, refractive surgery may be a treatment option to correct or improve your vision. Laser eye surgery reshapes the transparent dome-shaped structure in the front of your eye, that's your cornea, to correct vision problems. It's known as uh, refractive errors. The most common of these procedures is known as LASIK surgery. And here to help us understand how it's done and who is a candidate is Mayo Clinic ophthalmologist Dr. Leo McGuire. Welcome to the program, Dr. McGuire. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. How many people uh, are candidates for laser eye surgery? Well, there's about 25 million people in the United States uh, that have nearsightedness. And uh, most of those would be a reasonable candidate. Uh, but it also has an expense involved with it. And if you actually look at the number of people that, number one, want it, and then have the ability, the financial ability to purchase it, it's, you know, obviously a smaller number. And there's about a million, I, I, and there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of them done in, in the United States every year. Um what, what kind of conditions might disqualify uh, somebody from having this surgery? What, who is not a good candidate for this? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good question. It gets into what we tell people when they first come in and visit us. We say overall it has a very high success rate, uh, one of the highest uh, patient-perceived improvements in quality of life. Uh, but that's all qualified in the fact that you select your patients well. There's a number of things we look at. Uh, one of the major drivers is dry eye. Um, we know that if you don't have dry eye before uh, laser correction surgery, either LASIK or PRK, you're not that likely to have prolonged, persistent dry eye after. But you have to screen well for it and ask specific questions. For instance, a lot of people who come in for uh, laser refractive surgery do it because uh, they're become, starting to become uncomfortable with their contact lenses. And you have to ask about that because a lot of times they're uncomfortable because, because their eyes eye. are getting dry and they can't float the bow to the lens anymore. And that's a person that's also at risk for getting into persistent dry eye problems after. Uh, you have to look for incomplete blink. You have to ask what kind of environment they work in, those kind of uh, things like that. We also look at specifics related to the thickness of the cornea, uh, and we also look at specifics related to the curvature of the cornea. There's some people that are at relatively higher risk if they're outliers from the normal range. When uh, we were doing the intro, we mentioned both nearsightedness and farsightedness. Mm -hmm. Are both of those corrected through a laser, a laser eye surgery? Yes, you can. Um, you can correct a wider range of nearsightedness than farsightedness. And a lot of people don't understand what those two things are. Uh, nearsighted, uh, in optics, every distance from 20 feet out is the same distance. And mm -hmm. one lens will let you see from 20 feet out. Okay, and most of the human population actually sees pretty well at, dis at distance because they're not nearsighted or farsighted. People that are nearsighted, <clears throat> their focusing system, when they look far away, is too strong. So it focuses the, the sharp image in front of the retinas instead of on it. But if they bring it close enough, they can see OK. Farsighted people will say, well, OK, nearsighted people see sharp at near. Farsighted people must see sharp at distance. Well, that's not true. Uh, farsighted people see blurry far away and even blurrier up close. Hmm. Okay, uh, and most people don't even know they're farsighted until they're starting to get into their 40s. <laughs> Trombone arms. Because, <laughs> well, well, no, that's different. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different autofocus thing, but the lens inside your eye does a third of the focusing of your eye, and it also does autofocus, lets you see everything within 20 feet. And if you're farsighted and you're still young enough that you have a lot of autofocus in your lens, you can automatically correct farsightedness. So you don't start to notice you're farsighted until you ha start to have uh, bifocal symptoms like five or 10 years early. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? And, uh, and then as, you, as your ability to autofocus gets less and less over time, 
uh, it becomes more apparent. That's why most farsighted people are done in their uh, 50s, whereas nearsighted people are usually done in their 20s and 30s and 40s. So how, how are these laser procedures performed? How do you actually correct uh, nearsightedness or farsightedness? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, so let's start with nearsightedness. And nearsighted people, when they look far away, their focusing system is too strong. So you have to flatten the curvature of the cornea and make it less strong. And we aim at the curve, post-operative curve, that lets you see well 20 feet and out. And then the lens inside your eye can autofocus from 20 feet in, at least until you're 45, and that starts to go away. If you look at the cornea and cross-section, almost all its thickness is collagen, same material that's in a tendon. It's just, it's transparent. It's designed in a way to be transparent instead of opaque, like a, a tendon is. And um, so we wipe, we, we treat that tendon layer and uh, flatten it for nearsightedness, steepen it for farsightedness to do the correction. You can do that either with LASIK or PRK. We have just two minutes left. Sure. Um, is a real laser used for laser eye surgery? Yeah, it is. Um, but it's a different kind of laser than people are used to. When people think of lasers, they think of things that either burn or yeah. explode. Boom. <laughs> so that's, that's not what happens with this at all. This is a, a cold evaporation laser. If you can remember way back into high school biology, we're told that we're carbon-based mm -hmm organisms and we're also told that the carbon carbon bonds are so strong you can't break them the laser when it uh, uh, is applied to the surface completely breaks all the carbon carbon bonds in the first one four thousandths of a millimeter of tissue that it touches and that only that's only half the incident energy and the other two-thirds are released by releasing that material from the surface at supersonic speed. So there's nothing left over to cause heat or mechanical damage to the corneal tendon underneath. And that's why you can sculpt it so exquisitely and also not have to worry about scar damage and thermal damage because there just isn't any. So that's why it's so effective is right. because you can be so exact. Does it last? I mean, does it, you get your eyes done, the, the laser treatment on your eyes, 20 years later, do you have to have it redone? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It's very unusual for it to destabilize over time. There are some conditions where that's more likely. Uh, there are people who have a condition called keratoconus that develops during the teens and the 20s. And sometimes if it starts it, where they begin life with a normal curvature and they develop distortion over time, we do screening. So we're much more likely to catch that and not do surgery early. But some people who have it late can have a distortion over time. Uh, and other, the other thing that happens is that sometimes people who are nearsighted, they'll say, oh, this worked great until I'm 45 and now I'm starting to have trouble seeing up close. That's a different problem. That's an autofocus problem. Um, and everybody, if you're born with 20-20 vision, starts to have trouble reading it near. Because just like an autofocus camera, instead of pulling from 20 feet up to where your book is, down only pulls from 20 feet into like two feet, and your book's at one foot. If you're 64, like me, my autofocus pulls from 20 feet to about 17 feet, and I have a dead spot, and then I finally get where my bifocal <laughs> works up close. So, so that's a different thing. And is it changing? Is there what what's new? Um, what you know, it's a very mature field. Um, there, there's some fine tuning for people have more complex distortion. Um, there's some things that can take people who maybe were unintentionally worked on and have a distortion post-op that can uh, slow it down or stop it before it gets any worse. Um, but overall, it's a pretty stable, um, mature part of the um, medical practice, much different than the Wild West days of the, <laughs> the 1980s and so on. 
All right. We've been talking about laser eye surgery with Mayo Clinic ophthalmologist, Dr. Leo McGuire. Thanks for joining us, Dr. McGuire. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me.